It's 9 o'clock. It is the third day of August 2021. I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming. It's my birthday week. Gotta get your presents. And we are on day three of RPG A Day 2021. Every day for the month of October, we do this little artistic expression experiment that has been posted on Facebook for the past eight years, where we explore different questions and prompts about the wonderful hobby that is role-playing games and just hobbying and life and stuff and things and monkeys in general. Uh, today's words was a tough one. Um, actually, most of the ones this month are tough. Uh, we had a choice of tactic, risk, support, or image. Was, that's all, Those are all tough ones to, you know, think about. But let's go with the top word, which is tactics. And, of course, thinking about tactics, we think about things like how much work as a game master do I want to put in coming up with all the possible options that my bad guys are going to use once the adventure takes place. It's very easy to fall into that linear thought pattern of, well, my bad guy only has one thing to do, especially if you're like running a module and you get to like room 3A and it specifically tells you what the bad guys are going to do. But it's how do you change that up when the players do wacky shenanigans? Um, so if you haven't read the article on Tucker's Kobolds, uh, you need to read it. It's a wonderful example of how a game master used tactics and a very up to then harmless monster kobolds and made them one of the most feared things in his dungeon in fact more people became afraid of the kobolds and tucker's kobolds and then the adventure in question than they did with other things so we're going to go to um the uh, article, and it says right there, Tucker was a legendary DM from the 80s. This is a reprinted article. Uh, from Dungeon Magazine, years and years ago. And it talks about how this individual used these kobolds to become a fearsome threat. And many people who went through this said that even though they were running like high level characters, they found these kobolds run so utterly ruthless and clever that they were able to take on much more powerful parties. Um, so the point where, you know, they would do things to use kobold tactics like get them trapped in a corridor and then use fire, use the uh, terrain against them, use their size against the party. You know, as a kobold, you can move through much smaller passageways than uh, normal individuals. And you can use the terrain much greater to your advantage when you're only like two feet tall and you're very small and spindly. And you have things like, you know, funguses you can use and, and, uh, spores and fires and I ran a Tucker's Kobold scenario and the first couple times yeah they were very successful even though the party was much more powerful than Kobolds just because I was using the tactics and the rooms and the situations to my advantage I was using you know almost like you would say gangland tactics and I was you know continuing to follow my my philosophy that if you want to argue with me that you character can have something then my bad guy can have it now you've all heard my gun slinger analogy for in regards to options and if you haven't heard it basically arguing with a player about whether he could have a gunslinger in my game or not and finally i said you know what fine you can have a gunslinger you can have guns that means all my bad guys technically have access to guns too as well and since I have way more bad guys than you, yeah, okay, all my bad guys can have guns. 
And once that individual realized that he was going to be facing bad guys that had the same abilities than he, that he did, plus lots more of them, he uh, changed his mind and decided he'd just run a regular character instead. And there were never any mention again of guns being in my world because the idea of, you know, hundreds of bad guys armed with rifles is very frightening. And if they can use all the same things that a gunslayer can use, using that same philosophy and looking at the article on Tucker's Kobolds, which I'll print uh, here, post there, yeah, post here. I am getting old. My brain's turning to mush. I'm sorry. Post here on the, the link. Uh, so you can read the article yourself. But just following the idea, like, kobolds, especially if they've had time to be there and they have just some general, or just any race, that is even remotely clever and knows that at some point in time, things might be coming after them that are bigger and tougher, might start coming up with ways to use things to their advantage. Like what I did is I would have the kobolds drop, you know, walls behind them and fill the corridors with fire and drop you know, daggers on them. I had, uh, and one of my favorite ones uh, was bees hot, beehives. The kobolds would find ways to fling beehives at them. Um, and just, you know, plus they're dealing with the kobolds. Now they've got the whole, you know, area filled with um, beehives. I did another one where when the kobolds and the attacked and the goblins attacked the cities, they were basically using siege warfare. And I had this idea that they would fill clay pots with rabid rats so they would fling the clay pots into the into the town the clay pots would shatter these rabid rats would boil out sure some of them would die but you know nine out of ten you know might die but there's that you know tenth rat that's going to survive and be running around that's carrying a disease and when you've got you know 20 30 40 rats in this um cramic thing that you're shooting into town and another one I did was when the party was wandering around in the kobold bad guy's um, nest, they had basically a trebuchet type thing set up with a tree trunk so that if anybody went down this one thing, they could just shoot this tree trunk right straight down the corridor. And basically it was just this, you know, long tube. And at the end of the tube was the kobolds that had, you know, got this sharp big sharp stick and they as soon as the the good guy started funneling down the tube they just shot the big sharp stick straight down the tube and when there's no place for the players to go and that tree sharpened tree trunk just went through one two three players and they're all you know one of them almost got killed and i think one of them did die if i remember correctly and they're crying and i'm like i'm sorry they're just using tactics So, when putting in your bad guys in a scenario, think about who are these bad guys? What can they bring to play? How, I mean, you know, nine out of ten times you're going to run into a scenario where the bad guys might have a spellcaster. And the first thing you think of is, oh, you know, the spellcaster is just going to do DPS and magic missile. But, you know, what if I give my spellcaster the ability to buff my other bad guys or what if i give my spellcaster the ability to control the battlefield with like sleep spells or you know there's so many options and we tend to not think about them because we just sort of think linear uh my archers are just going to shoot them my guys with swords are just going to stab them i say uh way too much and you know way too much don't i i should work on that what do you think so yeah tactics Look at the bad guys, look at the area, think about their size, their speed, what they would use to protect their home. How long have they been there? Have they been there a day? Have they been there a year? It's a big difference if they've been, you know, in this place for, I said, I did it again, in this place for a year, they'd have a lot of time to build up defenses and get ready because, you know, I did it again. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I say that weird way too much. They would have some general idea, I would think, that sooner or later, somebody is going to show up who's upset by what they're doing. On some level, the bad guy monsters, whether it be the lowest tier kobolds all the way up to your big tier bad guys, dragons, 
you know, and uh, sorry, <laughs> I got to stop saying that. They're going to have some bad guy, some idea that what they're doing might incite some response from those meddling player characters, especially if they've been there for a while, which means they might have had time to build up defenses like Tucker's Kobolds tactics. So if you've never read Tucker's Kobolds, I'm posting the link down below. It truly is an interesting way to look at what is normally a harmless kind of joke monster and how clever with the use of tactics that harmless joke monster turns into something that's really devastating. I posted the link down below. If you appreciate this content, let me know. If you don't appreciate this content, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe by the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, tomorrow's my birthday. You got to get me presents. Till next time, I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming who says the word you know way too much. Talk to you later. Tactics. <laughs>